ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is the fourth episode of the Stuck In Podcast. We have Vic returning yes. after a little hiatus. And we also have a really, really good guest today. A good friend of mine, up and coming keeper in Singapore. Watch this face. He's a, f- on, he's on, a loud on. mouth. I'll say that. He's a very, very <laughs> loud mouth. We'll get, we'll get into that later. We'll find out. But uh, yes, we've got Karen Sobti. Karen Veer Sobti. Welcome, Veer Karan, Veer Karan Sabti, sorry. Yo, yo. <laughs> butcher the name, Karan butcher the name. Welcome, mate, welcome, mate, welcome. Trying to get on for a while. Yeah, exactly. Respect, no, it's, 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 uh, it's a privilege to have you on, mate. Come so on. far, we've had some good guests, you know, Harris, Ricky, yeah, two yeah, people yeah. you're very close with as well. Yeah, definitely. So, no, we're, we're, keeping, it, we're keeping it within the within the family, within the, the, the edge of box family a little bit as well. Yeah. <laughs> you love to see and, it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so let's start off by what's, what's, what's been going on with you. Probably some fans as well, curious, you know, you've been, you've been all around. I've been around, man, I've been around, I was... I was in Indonesia with the national team. Absolute the carnage. Yeah, we'll get into that later. later. Then I took a little break, went to went to Europe for a bit. A family friends, you know. Family Europe. friends, yeah, friends, friends, yeah. Friends, friends. <laughs> you know you naughty boy, and naughty then, boy. No, yeah, I just got back. Jet lagged as hell. Mm. I'm finished. But like I've slept like Still played a game on Monday though. Yeah, you still played a game on Monday, in the right? Last three days. Played ninety minutes. Conceded at three. Car yeah, two, 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 two. Well, sorry, I'm not doing two. anything about those goals. Harry McCoy, Harry McCoy, Harry McCoy. You gotta give respect to the yeah. bone sometimes. Guy outclassed us. I can't lie. Yeah. So, yeah, like I'm you right. said, you've been uh, you've been everywhere this year. I'm but um, let's start by talking about this is the first time you've been playing proper men's football. I'd yeah. say, As, even though you were with Young Lions before, I it's think it's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. What was it been like being on loan and being so, in that atmosphere at Tanjo Pagar? I can't lie. I wasn't expecting it to be anything like it is now. I was kind of expecting like. Like the classic, like coming into like a first team environment, like men's football for the first time. You've been nervous and everything. Yeah. But after the second day, I hit it off straight away. That's good. Everyone, and I'm feeling super. Like they don't. The difference that I felt between at Tanzania Bagar and other clubs, mm. it's like they don't look at you as like a kid, you know? Yeah. They because look at they know, exactly. They yeah. know that if you look at a player as a kid, he'll play like a kid. Yeah. But if you look at him as a man mm. and look at him as just another teammate, then you'll play like the same. Uh, I so guess, I guess that's a good thing to have, yeah. you know. That's the vote of confidence. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and then I like the amount of like like characters you have in the team, mm. from like the staff to the players. I mean, got, characters got, in a bad sense because I've nah, having nah. played against Tajo Parker. So I'm just, I'm just <laughs> like, mate, please. <laughs> I'm just like, we're, please. we're a team that you do not want to play against, but you would love to play with. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. No, I mean, I, I, to be, I to that be in sure. that environment, yeah, yeah. it's class. And I think the the best part is that we didn't expect to be where we are right now. Yeah. So the vibes are just ridiculous. Like, we were expecting to be the kind of same as last season, right? Yeah. Like, middle of the pack, trying not to finish. No, but you guys yeah. are really... Oh, you're I mean, punch, you're punching like a Yeah, you are, yeah. To my man, Ryo Nishiguchi. What a lad, man. Best what a lad. He's on fire. Yeah, he is, he is, he is. Best player in the league. Best player in the league. Maxime Lestien. You're telling me Maxime Lestien. Oh, he's not on the same level. I can't right lie. Right. Well, hey, but I mean, to be honest, right, I, I would have to agree with him only because, like, uh, Ryo has been hard carrying Tanjong Paga. I mean, he's basically the focal point of that whole attack, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. if he gets injured, uh, they need to change the whole system yeah. for it to 100%, 100%. Because to we work. play a certain way as well that yeah. suits him. Right? We play with the long balls. And <laughs> Tell me right. about it. Play with the long <laughs> balls. Jeez. <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's necessary because if yeah. you look at every team in the league, there's eight. Every single team, apart from us, build up from the back. Geelong build up. Haogang build up. Damn, they try to build up. Teams yeah. try to build up. They yeah, try. I but I think the only teams that actually can pull it off are... Young Lions on their good day. On our good day, but yeah. We'll, there we'll, hasn't but, been many good days, but, I'll be honest. Well, no comments on that, all right? Yeah, uh, it's Japanese because it's just in the, in the system and then Sailors just because yeah. of the quality. Uh, Albrecht's the next time. But the thing is, Albrecht's we, well, we played Albrecht's this past weekend, right? Then They don't really even play out. They go so direct yeah, nowadays. They, they to do. Ilhan it's, especially. It's to very Ilhan direct, yeah. I think they changed once Ilhan came in. Yeah, I think they even, have a, even towards the start of the year, they were. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. they they're good on the ball, but they realize maybe it's not the best way to win. Yeah, because I mean, like you you guys do well against them when you yeah, play long yeah, physical yeah. balls, right? Exactly. So. Yeah. But what I what I like about Alberex honestly is that a lot of teams, not just in Singapore but outside, they want to play a certain way, hundred percent. Yeah. But what I like about Alberex is that they look at the batch they have coming in mm. and they adjust for the yeah. players instead for of sure. having a one way of playing. Yeah. Because at that's the, that's, at, that's just good coaching. You exactly. Know? Exactly. And you can do that at like under 15s because the players are still like malleable. You know. Yeah. You, they're still. It's it's, you know, it's sort of interesting that you sort of mentioned that, right? And not to go off on a complete tangent, but I guess Ilhan sort of is the direct replacement for Suboy, right? Yeah. You know, because if you think about it, they didn't really have that target, man. They didn't yeah. really have that clinical goal scorer. I mean, all due credit to Kodai Tanaka, but he's not like an out and out striker. I mean, it's not you look, a traditional now, number now nine. he's almost playing out on the wing a exactly, little bit. Like exactly, exactly. Like yeah. a right wing and left winger. And he's yeah. still, still scoring loads. So still, I mean, yeah. yeah. 
But I think him and Tadanari and the, like the, that's the, for that front three. Even before Ilhan came in, they were still scoring plenty, right? So yeah. it yeah. just shows that there's there's plenty of quality and now Ilhan in there. No, but with Ilhan in there, they're a different kind of beast. And uh, I, 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 before I this, lie. before I gave, I, I knew I knew what he's about, but I didn't expect yeah. this. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Three goals in that game. I was watching that overseas. I was mind blown. Yeah, no. This guy, that overhead kick was yeah, dirty, and man. you can tell he's just loving it. Yeah, yeah he's enjoying he was, his football. Yeah. Really enjoying his no, football. because yeah. yeah. obviously we played on Saturday, right? And then we're leading smoked. up to the game, we're leading up to the game, which is like no matter what, Ilhan's not scoring today. <laughs> and then all the f- the types of goals he scores, he scores a little shitty like tap in header of a rebound. And I was like, did he celebrate? No, I think he, he hit one of these. Oh, so classic, fair, fair classic, play to him, but no, classic, I could, like, he posted classic. after the game. I'm not liking that. I'm sorry, I'm too petty. Yeah, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, I'm not yeah, liking yeah. that. I, no I, way. I have no too way. much pride to, to like a post. No way. <laughs> of him, him celebrating winning against us. No, no but what's but, this going on with young lions being playing the basically the very same team they play in the SPL? They don't have enough players, man. You can't blame them. So why yeah, are you guys forming a team? I mean, that's not for me to comment. You know, I yeah. think I think I think it's good for some of the lads in the team that don't get good, a lot of like, minutes. But yeah. obviously, when we have to jeopardize the guys that are playing in SPL, it's not great. I don't think it's going to be sustainable. For yeah, we'll we'll be playing, some of the guys in your team going to end up playing like 40, 45 games I mean, this season. Yeah, I mean, how, with off the back of national team stuff as well, like under guys, under 23, whatever plus. it is. That's a lot of games, yeah. man. Fifty plus, especially not players like Kyrian, man. They're yeah. playing him like. Like, that's an injury going to well, I can't lie. S- I mean, speaking of young Lions, you're probably going to be back in the fold. Because you're enlisting yeah. soon, aren't you, True, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you so. excited to come back? How, let, let, let's, this is, I think, is a perfect segue to talk about yeah. your development since you left. Yeah. Yeah. So, for the people that are watching and or listening, Karen came into Young Lions at 15, mm. off the back of a really big performance at yeah. AMF Kyren under 16. And I both signed yeah. yeah, exactly. So, you had a massive role in that team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were, that was the first time you played in front of fans, in front of yeah. Singapore, yeah. at JBS. And yeah. that sort of propelled you on a, on an upwards yeah. trajectory big time, and then you signed for Young Lions. You know you didn't yeah. have a great first year. You didn't really you didn't play. Yeah. And how do you feel you've developed since that 2020 season? So I think that when I came into Young Lions, I was like such a raw player. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I wasn't really like harnessed in a sense. Like I had a lot to to learn. Yeah. But I had the like the, the like the, the raw technical the, yeah, ability. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. And like the fire and things. You know. And then I think that. It was looked like I didn't come into the team expecting to play. Obviously yeah, not. Yeah, for sure. Because I think like, this is the first time in history that young lines have signed a player, fifteen years of age, right? I think the Ooh, youngest player. Gassing himself up. Oh, <laughs> oh damn! So I'm a record breaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was kind of like, obviously, I was treating it like I want to push to play, but like I was kind of more treating it for the fact that I was getting like great training. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, and yeah. It's, it's probably the highest level yeah, you've exactly. ever trained. And then in 2019, I was still playing for Turf City. Yeah. And Turf City, like they treated me so well. Like I have so much to give to that club. But just the the thing is that all the boys that I was playing with in Turf City, yeah. they're all on the same kind of path as us. But the boys who are really serious about football left Singapore. Yeah, they're oh, all, that they're makes all sense. Yeah. So uh, the ones left here are kind I of I think the boys. in Singapore, you have to be 15, 16. That's the, that's that's the, the limit. If you're, yeah. if you're a foreigner, if you're a foreigner, that exactly. age, you have to get out yeah, and, yeah. and go to an academy. You can still make it when you're like that. Like yeah. you look at Ixchan and stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. But that's but if like, you're a Singaporean and you can exactly. play in the, in the SPL. And then the kind of players that we, we've we sent out, we've got players playing at like Feyenoord now, hmm. Leganes, we had a boy at Bologna, we've got Harry Bros of Wolves. So we've got some massive talents. Yeah. And then I think that after the last batch of the boys trying to make it big left in 2019, and mm. I think it was just still playing like the JSSL League and stuff. Yeah, it's like, tough. It's 60 minute games, you know, it's like once every two weeks. Like, no, I, I feel that. Because even, even for me, when I was in, in, in Shanghai, it was the same thing. Yeah. Like before I left Hong Kong, Hong Kong was a lot better, but Shanghai, I was 16 and I still hadn't played 11 asides unless I was playing men's football, which sure. only happened yeah, yeah. like twice or three times. Yeah. So it's Monday, seven asides, and then maybe the occasional 11 aside, maybe once every couple of months if you can find a yeah. friendly. So at that at that stage, your development is never exactly. ever going to improve, and, and that's I, just the case for expats. I feel like. Yeah, I feel like as well. It's kind of worse for keepers if you're playing that kind of thing because for sure, keepers yeah. you need that eleven aside. Well, it's in like a a seven aside, five aside is good for your touch, especially as a midfielder. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think well, the technical side move, is good, yeah. but the keepers stuff like you need to be able to. I think that one of the biggest things in goalkeeping that is overlooked is positioning. Yeah, mm. and not overlooked in the sense of like. Um, positioning for a shot that's you positioning that, you know when, when where your team is up exactly, and stuff exactly. like that and how to move because that's what you do the entire game mm. and you barely ever train that yeah you think about it, in a 90 minute game mm. you're probably only actually touching the ball for exactly, what exactly. a minute two minutes yeah. out of the entire 90 in terms of actually handling yeah, it touches yeah, exactly the rest of the time you're just moving up and it's down right from your down. box and up the to the line you don't wherever. even have to touch the ball but just you being there can deter the player from playing a kind of through oh. ball you know what i mean yeah because he sees you that 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 segues perfectly into a quick story that 
you guys were playing Malaysia in a closed door friendly before you left to Indonesia, <laughs> right? I haven't told you this story. <laughs> you didn't know. I'm, I'm excited to know. Okay. And <laughs> Karen, 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 Karen been ill, injured, whatever it was, and then he finally so got some explain minutes. Or you won't explain. Oh, go on, Karen, go on. All right. If you if you're gonna be honest about it, I'll let you explain it. <laughs> right. So what happened was was that um, so I finished school. And okay. Oh, so the excuses are coming in. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. I see. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. All right, context, no context, right? Context, context, yeah. context right? Yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is, is that <laughs> I finished school and I took IB, right? And that's that. That's just tough. Respect, I respect, this, right? respect. So I was absolutely drained by the end of that. And you know, like I'm, I'm going into basically the the difference is in Singapore is that our season runs from like March to like November, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm grown up being used to like. Summer August vacations. to August, like yeah, yeah, summer yeah, vacations, yeah, 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 and having some time off, and like, I think that every player needs like a little bit of time off. Right? No, I and definitely then, agree with that. So, yeah. so it's like a tradition in my school to go for like a graduation kind of like grad like trip. Trip, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we'll I was like, I, I, I didn't plan anything to go until the last month before that, and everyone had planned like six, seven months before. Oh, okay. I was like, no, I can't come. I got football. Okay. And I was like, I cannot miss this, you know. Oh, I remember, I remember planning mine, and this was like, I had yeah, nothing yeah, to do exactly. with football at the time. I wasn't thinking about playing yeah, pro, yeah, and yeah. mine got cancelled because of COVID. And I, oh to this day, shoot! To this day, I regret it. To this day, I would do yeah, anything exactly. to have that that exactly. summer 2020 like, graduation trip. That like, so I, I planned in the end. I was like, I can't miss this, but I've obviously got like, I, I, Commit- I had a commitment to a job, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, so. Yep. I decided I'm only gonna go for two days, and they're going for like seven, yeah. six, seven days. And I was like, I need to, I need to just get there and like say bye. It's a my fair compromise. Last time, yeah. you know okay. I mean? All right. Yeah. So, I went on a Monday to Tuesday. I got back on a Wednesday. Okay. And we got a game on the Saturday, and then um, Along our, our coach, he allowed me to go for two days. He was like, Yeah, sure. Because I think like the benefit that you get from those two days versus training for those two days, like, especially if you're gonna if you're have a long rest of the year. Frame, exactly. Yeah. If for sure. For sure. Frame, for sure. So the thing is, I came back on that Wednesday. Yeah. And then. Come Friday, I was absolutely sick out of my mind. Every person on that trip fell sick. I heard about this. I and heard like, about this. Ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I'm saying like this was worse than COVID. I was, I had a high fever. I had sore throat, runny nose, throwing up. I don't know if you've ever thrown up with a sore, with a sore throat. I have. It's not it. fun. It's, it's not, not fun. fun yeah. So the thing is, that I was out for like a good week and a half. And we had national training yeah. on that Monday, right? So then the thing is that I came back after a week out. And then... The game against Malaysia was on a Wednesday, the following Wednesday, and I came back on a Monday. Okay. And I wasn't really expecting to play, right? So yeah. I spoke to the to the goalkeeper coach. I was like, "What are the chances you think me going in on a Wednesday?" He's like, "Oh, it's slim because you've just you've been out yeah. and everything." And I was like, "Yeah, fair enough." So then I was obviously ready. If you're on the bench, you're ready. Yeah, for you're anything, ready. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I knew I was he was out. ready. He was he was he was louder than anyone. He was yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. ready. <laughs> you, you were there. Right? You saw him. <laughs> oh so, goodness gracious. I'm not saying that none of this is an excuse for what yeah, happened. Yeah, no, no, no. It shouldn't be. It's, it's just, just definitely it's just isn't. context. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, it's such a dramatic lead, lead up. I love yeah. it. So you get to the game, right? And it's been so long since I played international, right? Since like 2019, and I'm I'm so like this is what gets me going. You yeah, know? like the I'm, guess, I'm the kind of player know, like... that I get nervous for small things, but for get big things, I'm on it. Like I'll get nervous in training, but like. For like national team games, for like massive you're games, you're cool. You're as cool as you come. I'll play like the best I've ever played. Yeah, these yeah. Kind of things, you know. But Fair. in training, sometimes I'll be a bit like. Keep that in mind. Keep in mind what he just said, right? Keep yeah, in mind. I'll keep, keep that keep in, in mind. mind. I'll keep that in mind. So then the thing is, is that seventieth minute. Okay. The the gaffer says, "Can't go warm up." Okay. And I'm like, okay. Two two days out. I'm like, I I train for two days. Like, I I don't mind. I'm going in. You know, for the last I'm twenty, pumped. right? Yeah, exactly. for sure. Because I think like I think like I was like. Like I was in the kind of thing that like, I'm like I want to be first choice for this tournament. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I think that I I, I was need... I was. Yeah. And the fact that I was out sick for that long was why I wasn't in for that game, right? And that's completely fair enough. Then I get in in the 68th minute. Okay. Right. 68th minute. I'm in. We're okay. losing one nil to Malaysia. Okay. And our keeper had played a really good game. Yeah. He, he played yeah, a really, he had, really good, he had good game. Good game too, for his right, for yeah. his international debut, he's 2005 Furman oh. playing in a 2003 tournament. So that's fair. That's he fair. Was, that's he was, fair. He was good. I mean, and he had a good tournament as, as well in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he had a good tournament. We'll get on to we'll go to that yeah. later. Then I get in 68th minute. Okay, it's a, cor- it's a corner straight away. All right, and then the corner comes. Uh, some high ball comes. I, t- I take the ball, or whatever, and I, I kick it all the way up to my to my player. Okay, the ball gets recycled to them. 71st minute, through ball comes in, outside the box. I rush out, I swing. Right. And this, when this he says swing, he swung for the fence. So basically, I, I rushed. I was like, the ball is bouncing. The thing is that it went over my right back's head. 
So it was a high through ball. Okay. And it was just raining outside, as well. Just outside the ball. It was raining as well. Middle area. So okay, so it was raining now. Okay, okay, skidding. okay. The ball was skidding. <laughs> the ball was skidding, right? And then I see he it. He was blinded by the lights as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I see it coming. I see the ball coming. Okay, cool. And then I rush out to, to smack it away. And then what happened? And then, you know, the thing is, is that, like, normally if a keeper rushes out the way I rushed out, like, the guy, he won't slow down, but, like, he might be a bit, like, apprehensive, you know? Maybe, yeah. This yeah. guy sped up. Shit. He sees me coming and he speeds up. Yeah, okay. Different beast, different yeah, beast. different beast. And the thing is that I swing and I go to hit it. This guy gets the slightest touch on the ball and I absolutely clobber this guy. I kill him <laughs> and I get sent off after having come on. Three minutes. Three, four I minutes. played three minutes and 50 seconds. Oh Malaysia under 19. my God. You and I, I have sent to tell you, off. And I got I, sent uh, off. It was so bad because I was sat next to Joel, right? This oh, is this our is young man, social media, like Karen and you both know him. And I was just hyping Karan out. I was like, mate, watch when Karan comes on. I'm telling you, Karan is a different beast. I was like, Karan, Karan is built for this sort. Like, he's he's a big time player. Bro, yeah. Yeah. Karan is is exactly what this team needs. Yeah. I bet you. And- how- <laughs> Kar- 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 Karan- to- I'll show you the video later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll show you the video. I'll, I'll put it in right now. I'll put it in right now. So okay, Karan- okay, so, okay. So Karan's coming on, yeah. And I'm like, come on, this is this is time. You know, he's been loud the entire game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our, our yeah. GM had to come and tell me to shut up yeah. on the bench because I was just shouting at the refs the whole time. Too much. Too much. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So he comes on the pitch. I'm like, okay, let's go, Kai. You know, be vocal. You know, get get into the game for the last 20 minutes. Get your feeling going. And this ball comes over the top. I'm like, yeah, Kai's got that. It's 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 on the right side of his body. You know, he's coming out from the box over the right back. So instead of swinging with his right foot for some reason, he decides <laughs> to swing with his left foot across his body. So obviously he's not gonna get the ball well, and get to the entire he, man well, first. What was going through your head when you did that? And I, just, I, was, I just saw I was, the ball I coming. Was, I was like, ah, oh, I got, I gotta get this. And then I rushed out, and I think that. No, why did you use your left leg though? Because he's left footed. He doesn't left. have a right foot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, I'm super happy that happened. I'm super happy that happened because I know now that in that kind of situation, you know, it's a mistake. You, yeah, know? Yeah, you, you learn from it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, but yeah. I think what's the kicker to this story, right? Is our boy here is like telling Joel, "Hey, look, you know, Karen is the next." I was, I was, I was dying. livid. No, I got to tell you the funny thing. He was well. trudging off as well, right? He was trudging off, and I was like, "No!" And I had to start filming. I had to. I, I was there as a fan, but I was just looking at Karen. I was like, "I have to film it." I sent it to all the lads, and they were all dying. They're like, "What happened? Why is he off the pitch?" Nice. So, so, so sent the off that, in three minutes. If you if you watch that clip back, like it happens all the time in goalkeeping. Like, no, it's just sure, kind of part and parcel. You know, you don't look in and say, "Oh, stinker from the keeper." You just kind of look at it as like, "No, no, 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 no." I would say stinker from the keeper, mate. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But it's like it, it, it happens, you know what I mean? Like, no, it happens, you know. Exactly, it, happens, exactly. it happens. As the last man, it exactly. happens all the time. But the, 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 the worst part of this is, is that in that challenge, I got a dead leg from the challenge because you the guy clawed my leg. Oh god, bro! And the thing is that we were playing Malaysia again on Saturday. Yeah. And I'm supposed to start that game. Yeah. You I'm couldn't. Out. You're out. I'm out. Absolute idiot. I could you barely know. move my leg. I couldn't sleep for three nights. Such an idiot, man. And I'm then so the worst part is the worst part is, and this is this is just like this is just comical. So I get into the dressing room, right? It's, it's an international game. I can't sit on the bench. Even yeah. It's friendly. So I've chucked my gloves everywhere. I see an empty box on the floor. All right? I go and swing and to kick it away. And I Why slip in that? the dressing room. Oh, I Man. Know the on the floor. Man. And, <laughs> and I just got up and I just wanted to laugh because just, like, just, just like all the events just happened in the last 10 minutes. Bro. And it was like, Why? I can't, Yo, I can't what, what the hell, man? <laughs> no, I, I, it's not like I got injured from that. It's just hilarious. I fell over in the dressing room after that. Does, does, does anyone know about this? Every like the only one player knows, and it's Furman because he came with me in the dressing room. He was like, he's like, nah, nah, I want to talk to you. <laughs> did he yeah. laugh? I'm pretty sure this guy was like. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably trying to keep a straight face. Like, guy, my mate's just like, been sent off. This, this guy's guy definitely. <laughs> Firman, if you end up watching this, I know you died after this. <laughs> Can you imagine not an angry current? <laughs> just trudging into off, the room man. and then swings at the a box and misses it and slips. Oh, my. it was horrible, man. It was horrible. And then I had a shower and then I just stared into space for like a good. <laughs> what was your reaction though? You get on your phone and you just see I get that. My, that I get my phone. <laughs> and I, I see the thing and then I'm waiting the next day. This is this is hilarious. So I'm I want to see the video back, right? Yeah. So I asked the goalkeeper coach, can I get the video of the game? Yeah. And then the thing is, normally when you get a video of the game, you email it, right? Yeah. Because it's yeah, a big yeah. file. Yeah. This guy could WhatsApp it to me because my game is 3 minutes 50 seconds. All right, yo. <laughs> <laughs> so he <laughs> sends it to me. Current VS Malaysia is the thing. 3, three minutes, minutes 56 50 seconds. seconds. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> clip. I touched the ball twice. I caught, I caught it and then I put it away. 
Yeah, you and then distributed to. Like, you didn't even touch the ball. I didn't even. Like, so, yeah, twice. Yeah, it's just twice. I touched it twice. And then the worst part is that I was you touched out, a man, man a lot more. You touched the man. Yeah, a lot I, more. I killed the guy. <laughs> and then the thing is that on Saturday we went away to Malaysia to play. Yeah. And I saw him in the hotel and everything afterwards. Did like, you say like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't speak a word of English. This guy. He's like, he's like, and I'm like, so sorry, so sorry. My bad, my bad. <laughs> so I was scared. I was scared. Career, I was scared. I like killed him, you know, because. But was he okay? Was he alright? He was okay. Okay, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Thank God, bro. As I'm trudging off, all the Malaysia events like nice keeper, nice keeper. Yeah, but I mean, like that—that that happens, you know. And I'm like, I'm the kind of guy, like, if if I if I mess up, if I play badly, you like, like I'll take everything, you know. As you should, I, I feel yeah, like exactly. You, should, you have to own me, it. Yeah, I, right. I really hate players who, when they know they've played bad, they're like trying to blame everyone yeah. else. But like, if I play shocking. Like be I accountable, right? I know yeah. I played. I feel like I'm gonna it takes a certain type of character. You have to be your own worst exactly, critic. You exactly. know what I mean? Yeah, to be yeah, like, yeah, okay, I know I'm the one that messed up in this yeah, scenario. Yeah, and exactly. Look, I take credit for it, or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, I I understand that it was my fault, yeah. and you, you move on, you learn from it, right? Exactly. So I mean, that happened. Well, bloody hell, yeah, man! Was, <laughs> I came back, I came out to Tanzo Fagar after after two like a week a week sick, right? And yeah. then a week with the national team, and then they didn't know a thing that happened. And I come back limping. And, and then they were like, oh, the physio God, knew, yeah, the yeah, yeah, physio. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what happened? And I talked to Alan, and I don't know if, like, obviously every, everyone who knows Alam Shah knows yeah. what he was like as a player, right? <laughs> yeah. He's, he's a yeah. red card fan. Yeah. Is he in the hospital? If he's not, I don't want to hear So I come I back and see you. I, 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 I hear speak to him. I speak you. to him in, in the, uh, this is before the, one of our games and then I've just come back and I tell him about it and this guy's just laughing yeah <laughs> he's like he's like this is so good like do you know how many red cards I've got in my career like <laughs> welcome to the club welcome to the club he says <laughs> so he's like he, he doesn't take it in a bad way he's like yeah it happens it happens but just the funniest part is that we had 180 minutes against Malaysia and I played 3 minutes of that and got a red card because, and you got a red yeah. like card that, that just I'm curious about this what's the dynamic like, like you said Noam Shah is a he was known as an yeah, aggressive yeah. player let's say that yeah What's it like having Daniel Bennett in the same team? I think that wait, that, and that must be weird, right? That, you know, you know like, it that must be first. weird. Like I'm, because yeah, for those yeah. that don't know, infamously, I'm shy and the Bennett yeah. have a bit of an issue in the past when yeah. they were players, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they've sort of buried the hatchet in a sense. Because when I was talking to him with regards to transfers and whatnot, yeah. you know. Uh, He's like, he was, I want this guy in the team. I, yeah, might, yeah, I might have yeah. nearly killed him, but I still want him in my team. You know, for sure. And I think uh, he, he, I mean, any Singapore Premier League player would tell you they hold Bennett in high regard because, mm. you know, despite his age, he's keeping himself fit. Yeah. He's really I fit. Mean, you, you know, you can, yeah, you can yeah, talk yeah. about that. Yeah. And yeah. he holds himself to really high standards. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And he's very... Um, he helps the younger lads a lot, you know. Yeah. I've talked to Fatula a lot about him as well, yeah. and you know, he's he said yeah. that you know at times he's come, Bennett's come to him and you know gave him useful advice, and I think that's really really necessary, especially for younger players like mm-hmm. yourselves to have that senior figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, I think that's one problem at young lions, right? You don't really have senior senior heads yeah, with a lot I, of experience. I think experience. That's a huge thing that yeah. I only realized once I left. Young I mean, yeah, you can talk about that, yeah, right? Yeah, what, what's it been yeah. like having players? I know because you are very close with, with yeah. Daniel. You've you've chatted to me about yeah. and the other guys in the team. What's it like having that? sort of like experience around you yeah. to really guide you and also maybe it's a mix of like experience but also just like some killer edge mm. that yeah maybe, like, I think yeah, young lines, it's, it's, it's part and parcel of being young you know you don't necessarily yeah, yeah, have yeah, that yeah. I think that firstly I think that on the topic of Alam Shah and Daniel Bede, I think it shows like the maturity you need in this industry to move past things because you know like in the heat of the moment yeah, whatever happens, happens, everything happens in the heat of against, the moment against um, uh, Ballastier two nights ago when we played like I'm really good friends with Akil from the team amazing player man of the match against us mm. he was ridiculous bloody rock at the back and we had like a bit of a tussle and everything you know yeah. we're like pushing each other ref had to like come in and then after the game we're hugging like that yeah. happens you know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it exactly. happens right? but it happens. like this this was like this was an incredible event what happened between them like the police involved yeah <laughs> Alam Shah banned, you know. So it was, I, it was, I it wasn't a small this. thing. It wasn't yeah, it was just a, a shove. shove. I didn't yeah. know about this until I came because I'm, I'm like a. Yeah, like, well, yeah I don't, I, I don't I know much really about the yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 league. Yeah. So they told me about it later. I was like, what the hell? Like, like, you go, you wouldn't realize the, it, right? The, the they gaffer, said, go the back to the The gaffer and my teammate scrapped on the pitch. I was like, I was shocked, you know? I don't know the exact age, but I think that Daniel Bennett might be old. No, he's not older than him. No, I think he's roughly around the same age, you know? Yeah. So. For context, Daniel Ben is 44. Yeah. yeah. Now, he could be your dad. Dude, I'll we'll, we'll get on this. We'll yeah, get on yeah. this. So, so then, like, the entire time... No I'm offense, like, by the so, way, sorry. No, <laughs> that's that's no offense. That's yeah, the exactly. opposite. The fact exactly. that he's 44. He's, exactly. he's still playing. Respect. Yeah. And then, 
So they say just all to so Fasha the Fasha. Not a legend. Ricky Ricky spoke about Fasha. Absolute yeah, legend. legend. Yeah, Fasha, Fasha is the funniest man I've met in my life. Mate, on the bro. bench against us, he's so he noisy. He's hilarious. He a lot of people ask screaming. questions about Fasha, mm. but like once you're with him, you know, mm. like he's, he's just a good dressing so room lad. Yeah. to the team. He must be a good he's dressing so room. So important. Lad. So the thing is that um, he's like, go to YouTube and just search up. Um, Along vs Daniel Bennett. Yeah, I watched it and I was just blown away. What the hell happened? So it was a, it was a it was a challenge that came in. Yeah, and then Daniel Bennett's on the floor. And Along knees him in the head once he's on the floor. Yeah, and then there's a whole fiasco that happens and everything, right? Brutal. And then I was I was like, I was <laughs> he like, just kind of just sat there like I was like, this is serious stuff, you know? Yeah, and but like then, like I think that like Along as a manager versus as a player. Is like completely. He's very, he yeah, has thrown down a lot. He has all the good qualities he had as a play, as a character when he was playing, without kind of some of the the extra stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the wild the, side, per se. The, yeah, the yeah. Stuff. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then <laughs> there's one really funny thing. So I remember once we played. I think it was Tampines away. Mm. Either Tampines or Gaylord, because it's at our Tampines hub. I'm pretty sure it was Tampines. And there was a time where this referee kept having these horrible decisions. You know. Like, he was horrible. Mm. And then there's another, like, decision that we all just, like, start shouting from the bench. And Along just looks at the linesman and smiles. He's like, you're lucky it's Ramadan. I'm trying to be a good person. And we're all like... He said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, <laughs> I was just like, this guy is just amazing. Like, he's such a good, like... He's just such a good, like, person to be around. Yeah, just you know a good what personality. I mean? Good yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he is, just he like, is. Like, I was like, I think he's the best manager I've been under. Because I just, mean, from, from, from speaking to you, he seems very understanding of yeah, your yeah, personal yeah, yeah. circumstances. Right? He doesn't look at you as so, just a player, right? Yeah, no, he doesn't. Just, he and that's, what, that's, player, what I've, right? that's what I've, like, experienced so far in Singapore football. That you get a lot of guys like that, you know, who just look at you as a, as a almost not like a, a robot, but, like, just a machine for the team. You yeah. know what I mean? But Along is just, like, so, like, I'm, like... I he's very understanding. I can't yeah. lie, man. But, like, obviously, everything comes to an end, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so then back onto the point of, of Daniel Bennett is that... Um, it's like he used to go to my school. Yeah. In the nineties. That is mad. In the nineties. <laughs> to us, that's mad. To you, it's like, mate, I was, I was, I was, I was yeah, chilling. We in the have 90s. like, we have like a theater in our in our school named like the Andrew Bennett Theater. So and then, right? yeah, dad, dead, right? Yeah. Never made that connection. So then the thing is, is that <laughs> how many years have you been yeah, at yeah, school yeah. and then now you're playing with the guy? Hey, yo, mate. So the thing is that I came in and I was kind of like, like. I was like nervous to talk to this guy, you know, because he's literally my dad's age, mm. but he's such a legend. And then the thing is that he he lives near me as well, so he drops me home, and we talk a lot in the cars and everything. Nice, so he's nice. like, we're like. I think that's one thing. Like we said, with with you said at the start, the Tanjong Pagar doesn't look at you as a young kid, yeah, yeah. right? They look at you as equals, yeah. and I feel like that's so important because even when I played Sunday football back in Hong Kong. It's like all the lads there have kids, their their teachers, whatever yeah, it is, yeah, but they yeah. don't look at you like that. It's just, exactly, exactly. You're another part of the 15, 20, whatever it is yeah. on the match yeah. day, and you're yeah. just like everyone else, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's such a good environment to be in, and you, you get close, yeah, and yeah, like yeah. you see things maybe you, like you wouldn't see elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. In a good exactly. and a bad situation. But yeah. wouldn't that also put um, pressure on you? Because ultimately, you're I think expected so. to I think so, grow up I think faster, that, be more mature, right? I think all that if the time. you enter professional football, you already have that That's good. kind of yeah. thing. That and you I think need, it's a you need good to be pressure. Able to it's a good pressure. It's a good pressure. It's a good pressure. It's it's like like this is not like a joke anymore. You know, this is, yeah. this is money on the line. Yeah, people's like, families, this is this people's is people's people careers. trying to feed their families. Like this is the this is the step up that you get to from, especially from leaving young lions. Yeah, is that you're now playing alongside people who need to put food on the table for their families. Every result matters. Every goal. Every draw. And whatever. Prize money is at stake. You know, and like this is when it really like this is kind of where. I think that like the discipline outside the pitch really matters because sure. you need that to be able to perform on the match day, and I think that's what a lot of like younger players don't really have, and then sometimes that four goes on the match day. Yeah. And then the thing is that you can't just be like, oh, I'll play. I like I might be at my best. Yeah. But if you're or, not or at your if, best, if, if I'm gonna be on the bench, it doesn't matter. Or yeah. Doesn't nah, matter. If you're not yeah. at your best, and you you like, you go for a go for a bit something happens, you're 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 done. Yeah, man. No, and I this is this is a cutthroat that, business. That, that mindset is like, oh, if I'm only starting or I'm not an important player yeah, or yeah, this yeah. and that well no it's a, it's a team right 20 yeah, exactly. even if you're not in the match day squad whatever it is maybe you get called in last minute every single person has to be ready you know what yeah. I mean yeah because at the end of the day it's a team effort yeah, if, yeah, yeah, if exactly. you don't do your best you're letting down everyone else yeah. not, not just yourself like if you can let down yourself fine you know what that's yeah, not that's yeah, not but if you're issue. letting down your so team that's that's, uh, that's where it gets frustrating yeah. for sure yeah, yeah. But yeah I think that's also like the good thing about about Tanjong Pagar is that if you do like make a mistake, like yes, they might kill you in the thing, but like that's just an immediate reaction. But then afterwards, they help you, it's right? It's not like a yeah. like a prejudice or anything like nah. that. You know what I mean? If anything, from what I've gathered as well, and seeing how you guys mm. train, seeing how you guys play, 
there's it there's this camaraderie that you know uh it's, it's very there, apparent other, yeah other you know like there. if there's an issue with the Tanjung Paga player if he gets into a scuffle with another player the whole team comes yeah you don't see that with you know other teams other yeah. teams other players will be just standing there waiting for the yeah, fight yeah, or exactly, issue to yeah. sort of yeah. you know and I think the, the you can see who's really one in the, the team and who's not when you're yeah, in exactly situation. but like, for yeah, TPU everyone's yeah, involved yeah, you know one of the most powerful things that the first thing one of the first things that Along told me when I joined the club we were at the we were at the photo shoot that was the first time I met him he's like anything happens within the team between us we keep it within the team and we talk about it within the team and we sort it out and I think that's just so like it's that's, such a good like, yeah it's very important like, to do that issue, you know? yeah. like, we talk about it and like we don't we don't leave it out there to just like hang. fester yeah, and yeah, then it'll yeah, get yeah. worse and, and worse. there's there's I think this is one of the only places where I found that there's literally no issues between any player in the team and there's no like cliques you know and if there that's, is it yeah. gets squashed yeah, yeah that's kind of an issue that I had at Sailors when I was training with the first team and everything yeah. is that like there were a lot of times when I was with the first team for like an elongated period of time yeah. like two three months you know and I thought I found it really hard to to associate with yeah because the young players there was only three at that time who was mm-hmm. there Anik, Glenn and I and then those two are close yeah. and like they're they're good they're good guys but like they're they're close together and I ended up founding because they probably came up through the system together yeah, exactly. whereas you, you yeah. know, being international school yeah, yeah. whatever they so I, I ended up finding difficult. like like the guys I hang out with were the foreigners so mm-hmm. I became good friends yeah. with Stipe and George we go for coffee afterwards and everything I guess and then, it's also like a um, a maturity and like different cultural because yeah, obviously exactly, you grew exactly. up in an international school yeah, so it'd be yeah, a bit different yeah. for you yeah and I That's did sure I did I did feel like a lot like more pressure in sailors and in a kind of negative way versus than when I came to Tanja Pagar because they're kind of like like this is like real stuff like you're going to be on the bench for us you need to yeah. you need to be like and I, I really love that environment you know and like you, the transition you, you almost enjoy the high pressures like, yeah yeah the, exactly, the states, exactly. and like I think the thing is that in sailors they kind of like like this is not this is not anyone's thing yeah. that they just kind of like look at you more like a kid yeah. in training yeah. which I didn't feel at Tanja Pagar so I guess you know on the back of that as well I think we had that interview at mm. the start of the season and yeah, I asked yeah, yeah, you exactly. right with regards to shameless plug I asked you right uh, <laughs> shout out soccer cookies yes yeah, right brother show, show the team hey yo <laughs> 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 no but um one thing I talked to you about is, you know, competing for your place in the starting eleven mm-hmm. on the bench and you having, you know, Fasha and Zarfan mm-hmm. as sort of competitors but also mentor figures, right? Yeah, yeah. How has that been like? Because at Sailors you also had really yeah, good yeah. competition in the yeah, form of Hassan. Exactly. So and I think one. I think honestly in my in my personal opinion, I feel that there's only three clubs in Singapore that I would really struggle to be first choice goalkeeper at. And the thing is that I play for two of them. Mm. Sailors, Hassan is just, and Zafran is amazing as well. Yeah. And I think also Alberex just because they're like they're like a Japanese environment. Yeah, so they yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like in a lot of other clubs, I would have a really good chance at getting good minutes. But I think that Zafran is just like he's, 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 he's the national team quality, right? Yeah, and he is just ridiculous in the way he plays, and he's just always secure. You know what I mean? And like very commanding as well. You know, he yeah, yeah. can hear him on the no, pitch. Like, and then for us, the, when we play against Sailors, like any ball in the box, realistically, he's gonna come collect it. It's, yeah, it's exactly, not that exactly. simple. It's yeah. just getting across it, and he'll spill it or anything. Yeah, like, yeah, he yeah. doesn't. You know, those hands. Yeah, they, they yeah, stick. Yeah, exactly, they stick. exactly. And the thing is that if he makes a mistake, he doesn't care about it. He's like, like. He, but I think that's he, that's elite mindset. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Exactly, not just exactly. football. Any athlete, the yeah. ability to forget. Yeah, like I remember you need to. so difficult. I remember only once ever seeing Hassan have a bit of a in a key game, and that was Haogang in the first season where those two crosses came in and mm-hmm. he spilled them. And then after that, it's like I think a lot of other goalkeepers would have that on their mind. Mm-hmm. Next game is back to his normal, yeah. of like amazing self. Because you know? like for me, I know I've made mistakes in games, and it yeah. eats at you. It yeah, eats exactly, at you, and exactly. I, it's it's like a, it's a learning curve, right? I, mean, yeah. I guarantee any young player is the same thing. For you to be able to forget, say you try and turn in the middle of the park, yeah. or, or you you slip on a cross, or or you yeah, just kick exactly, something, exactly. for you to be able to forget it and move on and it's just hot. go on as if nothing happened, yeah. it's insanely yeah, exactly. difficult. And it yeah. takes time. It takes yeah. time to get to that stage. And for me, the way I deal with it is that a lot of people kind of get like quiet when they make a mistake. And I think that's like this is taken in a, like a mixed way. Some yeah. people like think like it's good character. Some people are like, "Oh, this guy's gonna shut up." Yeah. But, like I, I get louder when I made a mistake yeah, because yeah. it helps me get back into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. A lot of defenders like I remember like like Raihan Rahman from from Tanjung an amazing player. He's he's, he's experienced well, like 32, 33. I remember even in one training session, he like looked back at me. He's like, "Like just tell me, like just shout the whole like the whole yeah. time, just just keep talking." Just yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, think that's like as as a player. Yeah. Exactly. I love my keeper to be vocal. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I would rather I you like say more than say less. Like no, like I think that is like my best quality. I think it's life. a defining trait without a yeah, doubt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Like, like you said just yeah. now, the GM like of under nineteen, yeah, you might exactly. think it's annoying sometimes, but like I would rather I would rather be seen in football, yeah. not in life, but in football. 
I'd in rather, life, he's annoying as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be seen as like an like obnoxious loud guy mm. rather than, than be quiet. Yeah, and yeah. I think that um, when I went overseas to to clubs when I was younger, yeah. I think I did struggle with that because. Yeah. I couldn't speak the language. Mm. Yeah, for and sure. That is a huge thing that I like. People forward, say people say that football is a is, universal. Is a language, universal. Yeah. It's not because but, and it's just, language is so important as well. Cultural if they, if sort of practices. If they look at you as all. a foreigner and someone that's different, yeah, exactly. how likely are they to listen to you? How exactly, likely are they exactly. to want to to? So the thing is that in the, you. so when I when I was like I was fourteen and I went to Slavia Prague, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then in training in the beginning, I just like I kind of like kept quiet and really didn't have anything mm. to say, right? Because I can't speak their language. Yeah. I decided in the last few days I was just like I was just like I felt like I'll just I'll just shout in my Be own yourself, language. yeah. And the thing is, is that they I remember the coaches were kind of like so they were like because I was saying weird thing like they have a different way of like shouting keeper when you come up yeah thing, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Way. so we're doing some crossing drill and I kept shouting keeper and then the coach is like interested he like wants me to keep doing it so mm. he's like run it again. And I'm like, he did it like five, six times. The same cross is coming yeah. in, no one attacking, yeah. just to hear me shout my because own version of keeper. Probably, and he's just watching, he's just watching. Maybe, like maybe yeah. for him, it's, 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 it's something to learn as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, because it's think, a different yeah, experience, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. It's something to apply to his own players. Yeah, for sure, like, yeah. Maybe yeah. they play so overseas different. teams, yeah. like different stuff. Yeah, exactly. So. so then I had like those two like really good experiences in, mm. in Central Europe. And yeah. I think that like even without speaking those languages, I was in a good place. I I think we can touch on the then Cardiff, you know, for those that don't know, you had an opportunity to train for a week with Cardiff. Yeah. Under nine, under eighteen. Under eighteen. So you were I think, fifteen, right? I think that what a lot of people don't know is that when I went to Cardiff, um, I went twice. I went in July for one day for and like then one day, yeah. and then they they liked what they saw, and then I went back in October. And then the thing is, is that I think that when I went, I was not mature enough football wise to 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 be able to show what I could really do. Yeah, you know, because I mean, I was, fifteen and I was eighteen, 15 and, I was yeah. training, and like yeah. this is like big boy stuff. I was autism four. Training with England under tw- like under eighteen national team players in like two thousand one age group, you know, and I went there and I just absolutely had a stinker. I can't yeah. lie, like I was there for like six days. I trained with the under 18s for like four days and the under 16s for two days. Okay, and the sixteens is not even my age group; it's two thousand three. Yeah, so, so I was still, under still one year older. Oh yeah, wow, exactly. And I was really good with those guys. I mm. like I was really feeling myself. Yeah, but I think that like I don't know. Like sometimes I had I kind of have like the the thing that like it was. It was meant to be that I didn't go yeah. because if I had signed for Cardiff at that time, I would have been messed up with COVID mm. because COVID, I would have been the first player to be released because I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm a foreign a, player. Yeah. I'm a foreign player, you know, who's not of that much importance. To be so, honest, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think like, like, Jordan had something similar back, with COVID. Like, so that's was, why he had to back to Singapore. Yeah. Yeah. I was on the back difficult. of the, my best tournament ever with the national team. You know, yeah. I was like, I was like man of the match against North Korea. Yeah. 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 Stuff. And that, that was the one that propelled you to, to. Exactly. And I went there and I was just like, I felt like I was playing a different sport. Really? Yeah, and it was like. But what was so different? Do you think about? I think the, that the, the first thing is that ball. is that I was I was too nervous, mm. and that because I was nervous, I didn't shout, and because yeah. I didn't shout, I wasn't being able to focus on yeah. the thing. So I was like, because you're just would, accustomed exactly, to shouting at exactly. everything, and that I would keeps have, you zoned in. To the I would game. have like a, a ridiculous save that like I'm not supposed to save, yeah. and then I'd let in some stinker. Mm. You know what I mean? And I just like that really like woke me up, and the fact that like the the thing that pissed me off the most about when I went to Cardiff. It's not that I wasn't good enough. It's that I couldn't show that I was good enough. Mm-hmm. I knew that I was good enough to play in that team. Yeah. But I was like limited. I was limiting myself. And I yeah. think that was such an eye-opener for me. I know that if I was to go back to any club in Europe now, I would stay. And only because of my experience at Cardiff. If I didn't go to Cardiff, I don't you know. You wouldn't have had this yeah. experience, right? Because yeah. I know that it's like the worst thing. I think Pep Guardiola said this once as well. And like the worst thing you can ever do in football is limit yourself. Like you need to be like, the opponent should be getting onto you. You should never think that yeah. you are not good enough. And I think that after that experience at Cardiff, I was just kind of like, um, I was like, like when I came back, I was like, I had like a lot of like shit to say about yeah, it. Like yeah. I was like, oh, I wasn't tall enough. But the reality is that I didn't play, I didn't play well mm. enough. Were you tall enough? I think that the other goalkeeper who was my, like, they asked about my parents and stuff, how tall they are. Mm-hmm. And obviously England, like they prioritize height like crazy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the other goalkeeper was only like 180. He wasn't that tall. At, the, at that age, though, at that yeah, age. At that age. So. And he was from Australia as well. So oh. the same, the same, the same scout who sent him. So basically, how I got the card to trial was, I was overseas with Turf City in Prague. Yeah. Yep. And we were playing against Slavia mm. and Bohemians Prague, another team I won a trial with, and then Sparta Prague as well. These are huge teams, you know. Yeah. These are like Champions League, yeah. like Europa League teams. And like since I've already been at Slavia and Bohemians, I I played like really well. Yeah. And then from there, I he saw me and he was like, "Are you interested in coming over to?" To Cardiff to so basically he's a goalkeeper coach who works for loads of different clubs in the Premier League to scout for players. Okay. So okay. he's like um 
Like Ogi Boch, I mean, like he has his own like little academy, academy but, but he's but also, he's also a scout, a scout yeah, yeah, for various. Exactly. Okay. And he doesn't even do just goalkeepers; he does like outfielders as well. Interesting. So there were two players, a boy named Bevan from my team, Bevan Cross. He went to chat with here, and um, we were both in Frank together. And the thing is that my family at that time was interested in moving to the UK. Okay. So we were trying to find a club for me in the UK, mm. and my coach from Turf City. He kind of said, like, it's not that like, great of an idea because, like, I know Karin and I think that he's much suited to Central Europe yeah. instead of Europe in England. UK, yeah. But we just kind of insisted. We were just yeah. like, oh, we have to try, we have to try. Yeah. Fair. So then I went over with Bevan and Bevan has a Welsh passport as well, okay. a, a UK passport, yeah. and he's from Wales. So it's and not... he played really well. Okay. Yeah. And he signed for Cardiff. Oh, okay. oh wow. He right. signed. Fair play. So he signed for Cardiff under 18s, under yeah. 16s at that time. Yeah. And then the thing is that he was really good. He was, like, bossing the, the under 16 league for them. He was scoring against big teams. And even he got released during COVID. Come COVID. Oh, wow. And well, he, I mean, just imagine if it exactly, had been you, exactly, right? Yeah. yeah. So I feel like, in a way, it was like a blessing, a blessing of God, yeah. like yeah. making me, yeah. in a way, play badly. I don't know if that made sense. Not yo, making, yo. Like, just, it wasn't it, the right, it, it was, it was it the right it time. Yeah. 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 No, but maybe it was meant for you because ultimately, I think that experience exactly. gave you a lesson that's much bigger than exactly. you signing for like, that, that completely changed my whole mindset about football. I came back and I just like, I worked my It motivated you to be even better. Yeah, because like 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 I said, I think that if I'd went there and played my best and like said I wasn't good enough, I don't think I'd still be here today. I yeah. honestly think that I might I might have just stopped, you know, because I'm like, oh, I've tried my best. Yeah. Like I'm not at this level. But the fact that I knew I could be at that level but I wasn't because of like just myself limiting myself. Sure. I was like, oh shit, I'm surrounded by such big players, I'm such a small fish here, you know? Yeah. But if you have the mentality that yeah. I did at that time. I was, I was totally... No, because, I mean, even for me, like, I wasn't on trial, but I trained with um, Sligo yeah, under-19s yeah, yeah, yeah. before, and for me, that was... Uh, under-17s or 19s, but mm. whatever. It was uh, lads one or, one or two years older than me and some my age. It was so eye-opening because it's, yeah. like you said, different style of football. Exactly, but also, exactly. like, I realised in the moment, like, I can compete, but it's the small things like, oh, me being quiet, not being myself, me being timid on the ball, you know, not making the normal pass or taking the extra touch that I would or I'm doing this and that. And that changes your mindset completely because... You look at that and you're like, yeah, I limited myself. I didn't do as best as I could. Mm. Not because mm. I'm not good enough, but because I wasn't yeah, able yeah. Exactly. To, to express, to express myself yeah. like I should. Yeah, yeah. So having had that trial experience, you know, going on trial is a big thing. You know, I yeah. was on trial with, with Young Lions before I signed, right? Yeah, yeah. What, what advice do you have for people that are going on trial? Because, you know, there are yeah, probably yeah. plenty of young footballers exactly, that exactly, exactly, for yeah. you to break in, you have to, I think to go, go for a trial. trial. It's yeah. not as easy like, as just signing a contract. I know. I know that it's like easy for people to say, but the biggest thing is you just need to be yourself. You need to just, like... I was... The biggest thing that I think a lot of people make the mistake of on trial is that, especially if they're on trial at a, like, already club, not, like, a big trial center, but, like, yeah. it's, like, a challenge. Everyone a challenge else showcase. is trialing. Yeah. It's just you. Yeah. Like, they're too... They're afraid to, like, shout. They're mm. afraid to, to like, like... like Be vocal and step exactly, on people's exactly, toes. and, exactly. and, and exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And that's what happened to me when I went to Cardiff. I was afraid to say anything to these guys. And then, in turn... Because you, respect, that you almost, your playing, you almost right? respected them too much, right? I respected them too much. Exactly that. Exactly that. I respected them way too much. And I think that... Oh, I don't want to shout at a guy that's playing for a Premier League or yeah, Championship exactly. he's, like, he's like, who the hell are you? Yeah, exactly, like, yeah. And then, th- that, you can't do that. Because once I'd finished Cardiff, I was in the dressing room waiting waiting for my, like, my dad to come pick me up, right? And then I was like speaking to one of the boys. And he was like, I was in your shoes. I was on trial. Yeah. He was he, he signed. He was on trial from like, not even a, a, a big club. He was on trial from some like London Sunday... Okay. Sunday league team, yeah. yeah, okay. And he was like, "I was in your shoes. Most of these boys were in your shoes." Because the thing is that Cardiff, I think, like most players don't just come in and exactly. stay all the way. So they from, do come from in on like trial, in the right? under 18s Cardiff team, I think that only maybe f- five or six of them were there from like under eights. Oh wow! The so they that, followed up. Yeah. So the thing is that most of these boys are released from big clubs, like big. So I'm talking like Liverpool, Man United, Menu, because yeah. every year they have to release some players, right? Because the thing they is, they bring that, in new players as well. Exactly. For sure, so, for sure. so up to the under 18s, it jumps to the under 23s, right? And you can't bring all of the under-18s up because there's, the there's already so yeah, many players. Exactly, that doesn't yeah. work, right? So then you get some players who are like, they're good enough to stay, but they just have to get released. And then that's they, why you get They're good whole, enough to play, but not That's why that, you get the whole talk. thing in England of like the, the, like the kind of toxic culture with being released. Yeah. That, like the fact that some clubs don't even talk to you. Yeah. I've seen it's reports like, of boom, like some clubs dumb. put it on their website. That, that you're released, right? Imagine a boy yeah. who's been in that club from eight years old. It's all he knows. And he's... Like it's very, that's what, football is cutthroat. You see, you see, you see suicides. You see suicides in the U, in the yeah. UK because from being released. Yeah. I think I've seen a good um, BBC. There was a good BBC about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. They need was, to address that. But like a lot of these players at Cardiff are from these huge clubs who come over. Yeah, and it's sort of their second yeah, chance. Exactly. So then, then there you get you get players like that, and you also get players who are on trial 
from small clubs. And he was like, yeah, I just, I was like, I was like really lucky that I, I, I found myself here. Like I really played well. And he was like, just like go back home and like just, just like reflect and everything. Mm. I think the biggest thing is that if you're on trial anywhere, you just need to not be afraid of pissing people off. Yeah. Because if you don't make it, you're never gonna see these people. Yeah, again. exactly. I'm yeah. never gonna see any of the guys at Cardiff. I mean, and if you do make it, they'll respect you more. Exactly. For sure, for sure. Being yourself. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be too sure about not seeing them again. For all you know, you know, yeah, yeah, there exactly. might be an opportunity True. where you. Yeah. Yeah. At the moment, <laughs> NS has done current signs with Cardiff. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And then Flat people test. be like, "I thought you said you don't want to see me again." <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. I think that's so true, though, because even for me, like different okay with young lines i try out and then i signed yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah, yeah. i wasn't the same player i am now at young lines that i was yeah, on trial exactly. i know that i wasn't the same version because yeah. i was timid i wasn't as vocal as i could be maybe yeah. i was more because i had that experience in ireland but yeah for sure that's so important because like you yeah. said if i never saw those guys again like exactly i don't care yeah well, that's, that's the mentality i didn't have yeah I went to Cardiff that i have now i think that i matured so much from when i went to cardiff to when i didn't and i'm really happy i went yeah at the time i was i was in a, like a bad place when i came back i was like fuck like because you must have thought like I'm this, is, whole this is the opportunity of a lifetime yeah, right? sure, yeah. Yeah. This, this is, is this a Premier League finger. side yeah. it's not a yeah this is, this is like this is big boy stuff you know and like I was reading some of the comments on some of the posts yeah. about me uh, like my local people yeah, like, you got a lot enjoy of... the holiday kid and stuff like that and I was like ah nah and then I came back and I was like you know what maybe this guy's right you know like at that time I was like maybe I don't have it but then I reflected and I thought no you didn't I, show I was, what you had I was just like I was like this is bullshit like I'm I'm twice the player I'm showing here yeah and I just realized that it's all a mental thing. It is, it is. football is a hundred percent a mental thing. You need character to play. Yeah. You need and some that character to be exactly, able to exactly and that character builds. It, it's like you you can be born with it, but it also builds. Mm. And I think that I was really happy that I did go to Cardiff in the end because it's turned me into the player I am now. But what do you and think I, it was like for you to get all that attention, scrutiny, good or yeah, like yeah, good yeah. Uh, good coverage, bad coverage, whatever it yeah. was, like at such a young age, you know, off the back of AFF. Yeah, exactly. All these trials. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Signing for young lines. Like yeah. what do you think that experience has taught you from that mental side as well? I think that I honestly didn't really think too much of it. I think that it wasn't like some crazy coverage, but I did get like some new stuff, you know, like yeah. like it's more than most people yeah, yeah, you know like yeah, so you yeah, had yeah, a goal yeah. article, you had exactly, different exactly, things written yeah. like that's more than most people yeah, will ever have, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I found I I didn't really I don't really find it too difficult to deal with. I think it would be more difficult to deal with if I was getting negative comments because, like, I was in the news because of, like, a bad performance, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, especially if you go away to Indonesia or some of these places, you know? Yeah. And you have a stinker. And then I mean, like, you boys, the under-90s had bru- brutal... It was brutal. It was, yeah. it was bad. It was yeah. bad. Yeah, it was bad. It was... I think that if we get... And even, we, I don't know, recently, like, if you've been seeing the women's as well. Yeah. Now yeah. the women's yeah. 18s, it's a very very toxic and then the worst part is about I think that about like Singaporean fan culture or whatever is that they're killing us on all our comments about our games and then when we draw 0-0 zero, zero to Malaysia there was zero comments you know what's the problem so I would kind of respect it if you not respect it but like keep I understand the same energy if we like, play well say we played well if we played like shit comment all the nonsense you want to comment but don't just comment all the nonsense and then when you finally have a good the, result just keep quiet the, the problem is right it's become such a fad to a trend rather to, to hate on Singapore football. You know, that's yeah, something yeah, yeah, that's yeah, developed exactly, over the exactly. past decade or so. Yeah. Um, has it always been this way? Not really. No, but definitely not. over the past decade, I think results at the national team level, things have changed. It's just things are building up and I guess people are reaching their breaking point, right? Yeah. Uh, more so, uh, it's fine if you're a long-term fan and you've reached your breaking point yeah. and you're having this sort of... That, that, that's the thing, right? Most of these people don't even watch the games. They're yeah. just jumping on this bandwagon of hate and that's the big they problem. The final result. Like, exactly. I, I, I give the example of the Timor and, and like obviously those losses are bad because people traditionally expect us to beat these smaller countries. But you're not... But, but you do have to realize the amount of development that's happened in, these, in those no, countries. We'll, so we'll, we'll, we'll go to that for a second. Yeah. Is that, like, I think that um, what a lot of people don't know is that our preparation for AFF was nowhere near what it needed to be. And that COVID and the way that it was ha- is, is handled in Singapore was awful. It was horrible. I think, I think it wasn't awful. It was safe. Because the yeah, other yeah. countries, they were still doing their football as per usual. They yeah, were, they were exactly. The training exactly. That's a classic Singaporean thing of like trying to be too safe. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. like I just came back from Europe. I didn't wear a mask once. I come back here in the airport. They're hustling me to wear it, you know. And like it's like the whole like kind of like safety culture of safety before anything. For sure. And I think sure. that's that's really good in some aspects. Yeah, yeah. But, You'll never get robbed here. Yeah. But I think that in creative things where you need to express yourself, 
it's too. I mean, if you in. look, if you look at football, the perfect example. How many of the boys in your team were playing eleven aside minutes before? No, exactly. That's it's, the thing. It's, it's, it's that, I mean, it's the harsh reality because there wasn't an under twenty one league before you guys. Left, the so under twenty one no league started in July. Yeah, yeah. In, in and before after that, the was, bloody it was, tournament, it was pretty much only. It was pretty much only <laughs> SPL. SPL was the only place and for almost a year and a half, two years. People, there was yeah. no one else was playing eleven aside. The other thing is, is that. Um, like we had players on our team who their first 90 minutes off the year was, was our the, first the, game at AFF yeah and like I don't know if most people know this but um, up to February 2022 from like May 2021 Sailors under 21s which was like eight players of our team yeah. were training in a five aside field I remember you telling me a this five yeah. aside yeah. field that's, that's one of the reasons why I went alone because I couldn't I couldn't deal with it anymore yeah. I was like this is, dude this is, this is I mean that's like, because of the government regulations right exactly but that's you can the only thing, have that, yeah. how do they expect to send you overseas to play against these teams let's, let's look at Indonesia's preparation for this tournament they went to like it's a tournament called the Toulon tournament in yeah. France yeah. Mm. they played against like Venezuela France Brazil Argentina Algeria Mexico yeah. Then they went to Korea. They played against Korean like K League teams. Yeah, yeah. And then you look at our preparation. One, one day close in door friendly match. One day in Johor. Yeah. And, like, it's 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 a joke that our boys are actually talented, and the thing is that our preparation just killed them. And that's the that's the upsetting part that like is overlooked in Singapore, and that they all oh, these boys have like nothing. We have to look at what FAS. Has was done that your too. strongest under nineteen squad though? I don't think so, right? Now, a number so, of players we when had released. A lot of players from Tampanese who weren't there that mm. we really needed because they get regular minutes like Andrew Ong Yuan Yuan gets it Adam Rifdi they do they get good minutes and those are players yeah. that you need in the team but no, I think but that I think it comes back to like you said the, 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 the fan culture whatever it is it's very yeah. they see the result and that's it they don't they don't look yeah. at the process no, they don't look at the context they don't look at exactly. which is it's not good to put excuses in like that. At the end of the day, it's 11 v 11, right? You just still do your best, but obviously all these things add up no, but and it does make it more difficult. That's where, you know, the media needs to sort of step up, right? Fan media. I mean, I I hold my hands up high. I haven't been writing anything for the past two months because I've been busy with my other commitments. Yeah. Uh, but look, fan media is also there to sort of offer alternative narratives in that mm. sense or also show paint pictures and perspectives that are not usually looked at, for mm. instance. Give you an example, right? The under-19s, I think their results in context of the other nations, like people, you know, shit on Timor, they shit mm. on Laos, but yeah, people but don't realise... The whole time. The whole time. They're training twice a day, you know? Yeah. And, Morning and night. Because there's no league. There is yeah. no league. Football. They're, they're, they're fully dedicated when, to the international... When I was talking to Mozinho, my boy, and he was telling me, bro, it's every week, it's five or six days a week we are training with a national team. And then mm. they build up that chemistry right yeah. there. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they've been losing games at a senior level, yeah. but... People need to realize that the senior level players are also playing the under nineteen to under twenty threes. Yeah. yeah, you know they've yeah, basically yeah. gone through an entire refresh. Yeah. You know that's what Fabio Magrao is doing, and that's what he told me as well. So I mean that's why they sort of they do well at the underage because they have all that senior experience that they can exactly. bring down. Exactly, so, I think that, you're talking like, about a team that yeah. lost only two 0 to Thailand. Two 0 to Thailand. Most of these mm. players they played to, in that team. Fi- Timor got to the final, didn't they? No, was that? What? Um, under no no semi no. uh, AFF they got to the semis I semis think. but yeah. for so under 19s they narrowly yeah. missed out and, yeah. they and the thing well is that the well. I think that like we had a whole kind of like the only reason that you should ever have a big excuse for like losing against a team like Timor Leste in like normal circumstances is what happened to us in AFF under 15 where they sent a 22 year old Yo. Play against us. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. So, so <laughs> we lost four 0 to Timor Leste, yeah. and the comments killed us. But they don't know about what Timor Leste did. Yeah, they they have a player on the AFF Suzuki Cup website. His name is some long Timor Leste, Paulo Domingos Gali Freitas. <laughs> this guy, he's, the, he's the like, most, yeah, he's, he's got he's got he's got yeah. he's probably the most famous player. Uh, yeah, he lost in Indonesia out of the tournament. We played we played against him last year in yeah, the exactly. Years ago, so yeah. the thing is that he's listed on the <laughs> AFF Suzuki Cup website. As born 1997, he's got this long name, he's got the same haircut, and he's got tattoos all up to his things. Yeah. We played against a Paolo Dungamos Gali Freitas, same haircut, wearing sleeves to cover the tattoos, and not only listed as 2004, <laughs> but listed as December 31st, 2004. So you're telling me he's the youngest player in the team. <laughs> well, this guy was... That, that, that is like when you kind of cannot like... Like, what are you supposed to do as a 15-year-old player competing against 22, a 22-year-old man? I mean, so but that, when we played against them in Timor Leste, they earned our respect because they had no average players when we went and played against them in Indonesia, and they outclassed us. Mm. And that's kind of when we changed our mindset that, like, 
Maybe. There's no excuse for this. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is where you need to go back to a fundamental thing and reflect. And yeah. not, not for our boys to like go back and reflect. Yes, we played poorly, but the higher ups need to go back and reflect that on a fair game, a completely fair game, we're we're losing. I mean, so many factors behind this, right? Yeah. But I guess the most important question everyone needs to ask is, what next? Yeah. Yeah, what exactly. do we do from here? Because they can't ultim- keep doing the same thing. They can't, you know. Uh, to be perfectly honest, right? I think what needs to happen also is, this is the problem with the SPL this year, because there's 28 games, right? Mm. And that's clashing with the AFC Cup, Champions League, mm. whatever. It's not catering towards the international calendar. Yeah, you know, for the youth levels especially. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for young lads, when when you you nineteen boys were gone, we struggled. Like we couldn't yeah. go to the bench and yeah, stuff like exactly, that. So exactly, it was, yeah. yeah, it does cause issues and, and stuff. You like guys that. were playing like we guys had four guys on the bench, two keepers, something like uh, that. So, yeah. Look, I mean, and I think that's going to be a problem until the end of the season. There's nothing we can do about that. Yeah. But for next season, mm. then there needs to be some sort of consensus on: Do we start the league earlier? Do yeah. we start the league? Uh, later but Maybe more three games rounds, three rounds three rounds or, or, you know yeah. are we going to increase yeah. the number of teams but I think that that's also three rounds is not enough like you can't yeah. play a season of 21 games no you can't you need at least 28 even 28 is yeah. even no 28 is the bare minimum apparently the for AFC ranking yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. yeah. And the, the fact that we're playing yeah. like we only have se- 8 teams in the league you only play 7 other teams you know? no, yeah, that's, that's, that's a separate issue I don't know that's a separate issue for sure yes we're thinking like I don't even mind if like like they're like hearing this or something like how how the hell do you think it's suitable it's okay to send boys to play in the AFF when their league hasn't even started come July. I think that that is a fundamental I, I think, issue. yeah, that under-21 league did and, take quite a while to, to set and up, like, right? Like, it's well, just, why it's just, didn't... I mean, I guess then two questions come to mind, right? Why did, did you guys have any friendly fixtures um, against other under-21 teams? We played, so we played three games. Okay. As a, as a team. Yeah, Albrecht. Leading up. So we played we played um, Malaysia. And then we played one like indoor indoor friendly against us ourselves. Okay. Internal, we, yeah. I don't. I wouldn't consider yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah. All right. And then we played Albirex under 19s. Okay. And that's before it. Before we left, that was like two days before we left, and that's it. The problem. Okay. I mean, I. This is. I mean, as much as I like to criticize the FAS, right? I have to give them due credit where credit is due. I think they are also working with limited resources. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, something that I've ex- like, yeah. seen firsthand because I like everybody works super hard, but yeah. obviously there's no. There I, is limited, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The things that I'm very limited. That the people there, like, yeah. no, when I mean by limited like, like, resources, I don't mean yeah, by cash. I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean yeah. maybe cash. But what I'm talking about is, uh, if you put things in context, right? It was in a TD for the last year. Mm. F- Philip, mm. God bless Philip, because I think he's doing an amazing job yeah. as interim TD. But yeah, he's yeah, doing so many different things that you know, like, and for him to focus on every single thing, it's impossible. No TD, no mm. head coach. Mm. What's the planning like? Yeah, you know, and that's no. Can I fault the FAS for that? Of course not, because you need to get the right TD. You can't rush into yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to pick the wrong person. Exactly. You, you, oh, let's do it in a month or whatever. You know, the due process has to take place. And I mean, I think what complicated factors is the fact that Yoshida resigned. You know, Tatsuma. Sorry, mm. he when he left. You know, I, I think I saw this tweet about you know, oh, it took Malaysia a few days, where it took you know how many days for Singapore to sort of appoint a new head coach. Well, that process probably that happened. Probably means that they knew that. that exactly. Was so they planned it like that. But so when all these that. when all these things were sort of happening together in conjunction, right? You know, there was no planning because there's no time to plan. Yeah. You know, they're sort of reacting to all this nonsense that was happening at the side. So now there's a TV. Now there's a head coach at the national mm. team level. Mm. Will there be proper planning? That's the question. Yeah. Because there shouldn't be any excuses from now onwards. Mm. You know, we can take bad results. What we can't take and what we should never condone is bad planning. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. I think 100%, 100%. the under 19s they need time to sort of catch up. Because let's be, let's face it. I think COVID has has ruined you guys. For sure, yeah, yeah it's exactly. It's right. been so little because football every played, other physical. team in the tournament were training. The exactly. Whole time. Maybe, exactly. Maybe they yeah. weren't Laos. as maybe they weren't as stringent with the the safety regulations as, as Singapore. So that's not. Like, it, we it, look at Laos. They were yeah. training the whole time together. In, in COVID and everything. You think Timur Leste stopped for COVID? I know. I can guarantee you that they sped up. They sped up their preparations. And we're, come 2022, still in a five-a-side pitch. And that is just, like, that. that is just a bit So, but I guess now that, you know, they've opened it up, you can have 11-a-side uh, mm. uh, fixtures, per se. What next, right? And I think the big question that, I guess, could be interesting for both of you to answer is, in terms of the gap between you and the rest of Southeast Asia for your respective age groups, what's the distance like? I mean, I, I don't... I You've think, played under 23. I, yeah, I think, same as you, you know, when it's 11 v 11, regardless of what happens, like, I, I think I can go out there and win. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I never ever yeah, just go into a game them. thinking. Ah yeah. uh, oh, shit, we're gonna yeah, lose. Yeah, 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 fair. That's fair. That's fair. Lost the game already. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that obviously goes into it, like the the, the, the the preparation for tournaments and stuff like that. And obviously that is a bigger issue that has to to in take place. But I think it's also the onus is on players, you know, like to prepare yeah, your yeah, exactly. what control what you can control. For sure. Like you, you mentioned uh, Coach Philip there. Like I, he, one thing he always preaches is control what you can control. Yeah. And I think that's something I've learned over the last year mm. and a half. You know, this this foray into to football. I think it's mm. with the trials. You know, talking about what you're limiting yourself. And I think the big picture from everything we talked about today is like you can't control the things that yeah. are outside you, right? You can't exactly. control if you're sick. You can't control yeah. if you're... I mean, you can't... Hey, yo, no, hey. Know, to, to an extent, you know, you can't control you, you, how your exactly. body reacts, You, you right? could have controlled the dead leg, or let's be honest, right? You could right? control <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. But, but in general, like, whatever it is that happens in life, in football yeah. and things, you have to control what you can control. You can't control how the circumstances around you are, maybe, mm. but you can control what For sure. the circumstances exactly, exactly. in your own personal life. Yeah, but I think that the biggest thing that we lack that is Minutes. also on the players is the gym work and that Ooh, was okay. huge when we went to AFF we got destroyed by these guys physically physically especially okay. Malaysia okay and I think that we played Laos and their tallest player was probably around my height and I'm not some massive guy yeah. like 5'10 yeah. most of their players hey yo 5'10 is a pretty I'm 5'10 as well okay that's a pretty good <laughs> height alright hey yo hey. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is that we have some tall players on our yeah, team yeah, we have yeah. some big guys on our team mm. like Kieran Teo yeah. he's 187 we yeah, got like Ryu, tall, yeah. Raul you know yeah, tall guys tall guys tall these guys these Laos guys who are like 5'7 to 5'10 are beating us on pretty much every individual duel. But it's also a mentality thing you know like yeah, it is, credit, but, like yeah. I'm not disrespecting the young guy but it's like Exactly, you need to have exactly. some bite regardless of your size. Yeah, you know, yeah. Not everybody has it. Exactly. Even if you're a tall fella, maybe you don't have the bite. Yeah, but so. I think that we had, like, like this is like a, this is a contact sport. And honestly, if you were to look at all of our players, like their bodies, like they, they're they not big enough to play at this level 100% fully, like to, to, to go out there. We do have some players like yeah. that. But I even, like... I mean, you're someone kind of, that emphasizes gym work and recovery exactly. and nutrition and, like, really... You, you really need really to do that. And the thing is that the... Like, I've been able to work on my handling. The biggest thing for me was my handling. I need to get better at that in 2021. And I only made the connection recently that my handling got better as I started going to the gym. Yeah. I was able to hold shots better. And it's not because I was just training, 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 training. It's because I was doing stuff outside. It's, it's that, a combination. Everything's exactly, linked together. Exactly, yeah. 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 Football in the and gym then, is, is part and parcel. You know, yeah, like, exactly. if you're like, a better you to... conditioned athlete, you'll be a better footballer. 100%, yeah. 100%, 100%. And I think that, like, a lot of other like clubs focus on that that I think sailors have a really good focus on gym but like it's also kind of down to the clubs to give these players gym plans and give them time to go to the gym you know I think it's all like, the progression right everything yeah. comes you exactly, have to have exactly. people if you don't have that, that then you need to go out and ask for it which a lot of the players are kind of like especially in our team they're kind of like oh I don't know who to ask and everything well, like, it's simple as researching exactly. yourself as well it's like you have to take some like yeah. control what you can control right exactly, take, exactly. take some accountability and have some yeah. initiative to go okay, exactly. so I think the this. biggest difference for us in this tournament was number one minutes yep number two is kind of a mentality thing that you need to have that killer instinct you need to have and gym work yeah. the yeah. gym work is such a big thing that we need to work on alright so I guess for me the perfect way to end this is what's next for you you know you've been yeah. off the back of this tournament obviously it's yeah. disappointing you have AFC qualifiers yeah. you have the rest of the SPL season yeah. NS potentially as well coming up yeah, yeah, yeah. Mid, late September you said, can't wait to see you ball man I really so, can't wait to see you ball I, mean, sorry, you know, I think I feel like I feel like it'll be a look so what are you most looking forward to like what are you maybe nervous about stuff like that I'm kind of I'm just looking forward to getting back to playing regular football because I haven't played for so long. Right, 21s especially, yeah, right? Exactly. I, like, I a, a lot of people actually didn't know this until I put it like on my Instagram things that like I didn't play at the AFF because I was sick, right? Yeah. And the thing is though, the reason why I was sick, just touching on it, is that it was from the time I got sick at Koh Samui. Okay. And oh, that happened. You didn't fully recover. And no. the thing is that it turned into a bacterial sinus infection. Oh, wow. That so I didn't realize. Serious, so yeah. I thought I was sick again. But no, but it I was... I went to uh, the doctor and I was on antibiotics and steroids and stuff. He was like, you can't, tr- you can't do anything for the next two weeks. And I was like, I've got like a massive tournament. It's like, I'm sorry, you can't do anything. Like, if you don't want this to, like, become some serious issue, you have to rest. Whoa. So that was that was what my doctor told me. So the thing is that I'm just, like, really looking forward to getting back to playing football. Yeah. You know, I'm so happy I played when I came back. I was four weeks out, so three weeks sick, right? And then one week I was away. Yeah, but I you... landed from a 13-hour flight. Yeah, at, at 7 a.m. I landed in Singapore. 7.30 p.m. the same day I'm kicking off. Yeah. You know, and I was like... I was like, fuck, I'm, I'm kind of like, what, what, what's, what's going to happen? Yeah. Again? But from minute one, I was on it, you know? Yeah, it's just, when you step was, on the pitch, exactly, you just exactly, switch, yeah, yeah, switch yeah, mindsets. Yeah, exactly. So I was really happy I played that. So first day, I'm just really looking forward to getting back to playing regular football. But then going forward, I've got NS coming up next 
t- in about two months. Two months, give yeah, it a date, yeah. Exactly, but like I think my enlistment date is not too shabby because it's come like it's coming near the end of the season. Yeah. So once I finish BMT, I'm ready to come back. And, to and Young Lions. yeah, you're you're, and you're coming I'm to start really year. Looking forward to coming into Young Lions and just like. I think that a lot of issues that came from Young Lions was like the goalkeepers in the very beginning. I think Ridwan is really good, but I think that like in like when I was there, especially in 2020, a lot of like stuff came from the goalkeepers, and we were yeah. losing points because of that. And I'm just really looking forward to like showing how much coming in with like probably, a, like right? a winning mentality. You know what I mean? And like wanting to like show that like we can play, yeah, and that we can we don't have to sit on the bottom of the table, yeah, and that no. we can we can come higher in the table because it's all in the head. It's hundred percent in the head. Don't let me asking right. Which other keepers will be at Young Lions when you are at Young Lions? I actually have no clue. I think Ricky might be. Ricky I mean, would be. Ricky's Umar? just enlisted recently, so I mean, it's it's it's. it's I have no clue like, actually, yeah. but I, I I never think about that. Like I just think about like. Oh, it's a good mentality. You don't worry about anyone else. Yeah. No, for yeah, sure. Like, but like, I guess you guys would have uh, players, then, then You guys would have a, a quintet probably, right, of players who could have a fighting chance for number one, which is good, you know. Yeah, it's a good competition. Right? Good yeah, competition. It's good. For the coach. Good. Like, you want the headache. The coach wants the headache. You know to have loads of players but I'm just looking forward to that man and then going forward as soon as I finish NS the door is open to go anywhere so we'll yeah, see yeah, we'll see. The yeah. Mindset is going hopefully yeah. follow some, someone someone like Rahan Stewart's footsteps yeah, you know, yeah, you overseas I'm so think, happy for him yeah. I'm so happy for him good probably good living good. the life living alone in Thailand yeah, yeah, I think I think that that's like like you you only feel like a professional footballer once you step out of Singapore maybe and once like, the independence the yeah. being a foreigner exactly, and, exactly. and like when you have to like take care of yourself properly mm-hmm. you're living on your own yeah. yeah, you need to budget. Yeah, you man, need to budget, man. Budget. To budget. So yeah, I'm just I'm looking forward to the future. Well, a lot of interesting, exciting things coming up for everyone at this table. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully, all right. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the fourth episode of Stuck In Podcast. Very happy to have again thank Cara you for and Vic. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, man. Thanks, brother. Good yeah, conversation with us. All right, yeah. I'll see you guys. Peace. See you.